Setting out to purchase an air purifier, we set our sights on something that would stand up to more than a few weeks of usage but wouldn't break the bank. We settled on this Filtreat air purifier. This 3-speed air purifier came in at $35, is ENERGY STAR rated, and covers 110 square feet. It's lightweight and easy to move. It's also HEPA certified. Not sure if it was the wildfire smoke, pandemic era masking, or the non-deodorant wearing neighbor who ironically sells homemade soap, hey, brah. but air quality has been on the mind lately. The buttons are non-depressible and only offer feedback in the form of light, no sound, when you engage them. On the lowest fan setting, it runs remarkably quiet for this price point. But on the highest fan setting, it sounds like a leaf blower. It offers three different turn-off timer options, and you can reset the air filter warning when you change the filter. And ironically, it allows you to dim the lights on the control panel for better sleep. I did not see a button for it to dispense earplugs. The unit does not rotate or spin or have any kind of directable air vents, but that's really what I kind of like about this unit. It's super simple. Changing the air filter is easy. The front cover snaps off and exposes the filter. The replacement filter is the A model, and the vendor recommended replacing it every six months. At around 30 bucks a filter, that's an additional $60 a year plus operating costs. Behind the filter is the fan which draws the air in through the filter and pushes it out through the vent on the top of the unit. Part of the big price tag on the filter might have something to do with earning the HEPA certified badge, but I'm sure there's a crack team down at HEPA headquarters whose work has earned them that premium bump in price. This air purifier is currently super affordable, though the filters are pricey by comparison. However, it does the job you'd expect while having fewer bells and whistles to one day break. Happy to report that after six months in, knock on wood, knock on wood, we've had no issues so far. One of the best things about this unit is the price tag. We happen to find ours for less than $35. Overall, the filtreat unit works as expected at a very attractive price point. It produces highly filtered air, which raises a philosophical question. Is machine-made HEPA filtered air better for us than the outdoor air naturally occurring in nature? So this is the Dyson air purifier. It comes uh, in the one size, which is super huge. And these are some of the chemicals that it's supposed to filter out of the air, in addition to dust and dander. Here's the remote. It's kind of like an Apple TV 1.0 remote. So clicking the I button on the remote will change the display on the machine. So that's 24-hour air quality is showing. There's PM 2.5, PM 10, etc. Basically on the bottom where it's green on the left and on the top it would be red. Red is bad, green is good in terms of what it's measuring. And this is the filter life. It gives you a little animation about how to change the filter and how much filter life it estimates is left. And this next part is going to show basically that it has a magnetic ability to stick to the top of the machine so that you don't lose the remote and it doesn't fall off when the machine is rotating, which is pretty slick. So now we'll go into the app and basically you can mirror what you saw on the machine display inside of the app, but you can get more data. Um, you can see it in graph form, you can flip through the various things that it's showing you and see today, seven days back, or however many days you want to see. Now deeper into the app, you can see the controls that you can manipulate. You can set the timer and move the wheel so many hours, hit OK to set it, or hit set. You can also set the oscillation, you can pull the anchor on the bottom to set the starting point and then go various degrees left and right of that. So you don't have to get up and actually move the fan. Um, that's pretty handy. So here you can schedule your machine. Um, in this example we have it scheduled Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on automatic so it just does what it needs to do. And under the filter settings you can see how much percent life the filter has left based on their estimate. So here we're going to open up the bottom of the machine and show the filter. This is how you change the filter. The little window on the lower left is from the app showing you step by step what you need to do. But basically you 
use your thumb and you unhook both those sides and the filter comes out in two halves. There's uh, semi-circles each filter and that is the airflow in to the fan and you can see here after a couple months use it's already collected quite a good amount of dust. So yeah it's not hard at all to change that filter. One last look at the app you can do voice control and set it up. Um, here you can do set the fan on it in this example and I'm going to set the oscillation on it and then save it. Basically you give it its own name and it remembers not only to turn the fan on but what settings you had requested. So yeah, this is this is way more than any air purifier I'd ever used. I really like how well it does the air cleaning in terms of the dust that it collects. Um, primarily using it for an allergen filter. It is expensive and the filters are expensive, but I think in the end it's it's really well worth it. So this is the Eve Room. It's a small connected device to detect volatile organic compounds, otherwise known as VOCs. And they're produced by pretty much anything. Cleaning, new toys, appliances, furniture, cooking. Um, basically when your windows are shut, and there's air quality issues, this is going to help you detect them. The actual device is about the size of a single cookie. And it does three things. It measures temperature, it measures humidity, and it measures air quality. As in zero out of five stars up to five out of five stars. Unfortunately, it doesn't really tell you what it's measuring in the air quality, so it's hard to break down what the issue might be. And the display does show off dust and fingerprints, so you got to kind of keep that in mind. It allows you to customize the display to some extent. Here I'm just flipping through the multiple screens. Uh, the leaf is just showing you air quality. You can put temperature or humidity in the forefront or both at the same time. It's really not much more than that. You can see a little bit of bleed on the e-ink display, um, and that's because I'm in direct sunlight. But otherwise, it's uh, phenomenal that you can even read it in direct sunlight. In the app itself, you can see under the temperature, if you go under the eye for info, and then you go under the measurements data, uh, basically it's, it's taken the temperature every 10 minutes, so 144 times in a 24-hour period. I'm not sure how to customize that. I'd like to, because uh, at certain times, I'd like it to respond to a temperature gradient change before a 10-minute interval. The vendor is Eve, and they pride themselves on privacy, as you can see on their website, saying that they're 100% privacy. Um, you know, that's probably as good as the weakest link in their privacy chain in terms of how, how they handle data, but they do tout that your data is private as far as that's controllable. So here for a humidity test, I had 37% humidity uh, from running the fireplace. So I went over and boiled a pot of water on high and threw a ton of water into the air to see how long it would take or if it would measure that. And sure enough, it kicked it up to 53% and it measured it pretty quickly. On iOS, you can do automation. So I can say to add an automation here under the home kit. And for the event, I'm going to do a sensor detect something. For Eve Room, I have three different options. I'm going to choose the humidity on the bottom and make it so that it's basically when the humidity goes below 40%, I want to be alerted about it. Um, so I'm going to have it activate the HomePod, which is a speaker, and have it play uh, Free Fallen by Tom Petty. Ideally, you would have it actually kick on a humidifier or something um, you know, more useful. But for the purposes of the demo, I don't have a, a smart humidifier yet. So I thought I'd do free falling. You can't go wrong with Tom Petty. Now by comparison, the Dyson measures the VOCs, shows you what it's measuring, has a remote, and actually rectifies the situation with a built-in fan. What I like about this is that it measures the air quality in a small unit. Um, and you get about 30 days battery life. And you can connect it to home automation. And it's portable. You don't need to keep it plugged in, you can put it on a bookshelf anywhere. I think what I dislike about it is the price, it's $100 USD, um, and it's better for trending, not for, for quick quick changes. So in that regard, and plus it doesn't rectify, in that regard, um, I think it comes up a little short for the amount of money you're putting out there. However, 
I gotta say the units lasted and lasted and lasted. I've had it for a couple of years and it's um, you know it's pretty much set and forget type of a unit. Mm -hmm.